Welcome. Today we're going to talk about LEDs, give some characteristics of them, um, how they're used in droid building, and a bit about sort of diffusion. Anyone who's played with electronics in the past sort of knows what an LED is. And here we have some standards, 8mm ones. Um, the longer wire is sort of positive, and the shorter wire is negative, and if you look there's a flat bit in the LED where the negative wire is. Um, anyone who's done R2 building a past will know what a TCs is, and here we are here. It's an array of, sort of LEDs on the circuit board. You either have red or blue or orange and green, and these flicker on and off for the main sort of PSIs. So LEDs have certain characteristics, and these can be summarized as follows. Every LED has a voltage and a current. From these, we can work out the sort of power of the LED. And then roughly you can roughly equate the power to a number of lumens, which is how bright the LED is. However, LEDs aren't 100% efficient, so some of that power goes to lumens and a byproduct of some of the extra power is going to heat, which is important and I'll get to later. One of the other important aspects is the angle of the LED. Not angles, sorry, not every LED produces the same angles. Some are very narrow and some are wide. And here I'll give a quick sort of demonstration. Using a sort of 3 volt coin battery, we can connect these to the LED. And we can see sort of angle. So with this one, it's sort of quite narrow and also sort of quite bright. So we'll leave that there. And then we can pick another one. And we can see It's not as bright, but it's also a sort of wider angle. And if I shine it the other way, you can see it produces quite a hot spot from a distance. And as I get closer, obviously it gets smaller. Whereas with this one, the green one, close up it's fine. Further away, it's sort of less bright and you can't really see it. This is anyone who's built an R2D2 knows this is an issue so when you go out into bright sunlight sometimes you can't see the sort of LEDs on R2 um, and they get washed out by the sun. LEDs come in various sizes so for example here are some 8mm LEDs some standard 5mm LEDs and smaller 3mm LEDs. Um, you can also see that some come with a white or clear body and others have coloured bodies. And here we are a bit more about LED angles. On the left we have a green LED with a roughly sort of 30 degree so angle on it, you can see so how bright it is and so where it shines up to. In the middle we have a 5mm bright LED with a slightly narrower angle and you can see it goes a lot further hence it's brighter and on the right we have a so 8mm green LED with a sort of like a wide angle. The LED size doesn't necessarily equate to the angle of it. You can get bright large LEDs or you can get dim small LEDs it just varies on the sort of typical color of the LED and sort of current of it. One of the characteristics of LEDs is its brightness and this is sort of very important with droid building. You don't want LEDs to be too bright and you don't want them to be too weak. And as a note be sort of very careful when you are playing with these Sort of batteries um, are very dangerous to children. If they eat them, they can sort of burn the esophagus on the way down. So 
be very careful with them. And while we're talking about sort of batteries, LEDs are typically anywhere from say 1.8 volts up to sort of 3 volts, so they work nicely off one of these sort of 3 volt batteries. But you can also get 5 volt and 12 volt standard LEDs. So now we're moving on from standard LEDs onto sort of WS2812 type LEDs, what's commonly known as sort of NeoPixels. Anyone in the R2 building community will sort of know what these are, but not necessarily so sort of what they are. So here we have some st standard Paul Murphy, Joy Monkey type sort of logics. These are front LED or front displays. Um, and you can see the array of LEDs here. Each LED itself has typically four or six pins. You have a common plus rail, a common ground rail, and then an in pin and an out pin. And they're driven by some type of microprocessor, which you can see on the back of this board here. Neopixels come in sort of different formats. Here they are in a sort of grid array, and here is a LED shield or near pixel shield that fits onto an Arduino. In addition to that, you can get a sort of strip LED, and these also come in great big lengths and round LEDs, which you can just about see here. The LEDs are individually addressable and driven by an Arduino. So typically you'll have an LED strip like this. You'll have address zero here, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You tell each LED what color you want it to be, a mixture of red, green, and blue, and how bright you want it to be. With the Arduino, um, you can use sort of different libraries or different ways to communicate. Um, you can use a what's called a NeoPixel library or a fast LED library. I tend to use fast LED um, as it is a lot quicker than standard NeoPixels. So you have like an in pin here, and this addresses these seven LEDs. And then if you want to cascade it, you can connect this out pin to an in pin of a subsequent device such as this ring here and if I turn the ring over you can see each ring itself has four pins you have sort of ground five volts in and out so here's a test of a sort of near pixel strip and to explain how they work um, you can see I've got a sort of voltage current meter in line as well um, the NeoPixels can take quite a lot of power, and especially when you have a large number. So something to be wary of is how much power you're pulling and how much the Arduino can supply. Typically with a large number of NeoPixels, I would use a separate 5 volt power supply to actually power the NeoPixels themselves. So just to explain the code, um, I'm using pin 2 for the data pin to supply data to the strip. Um, and I've got eight NeoPixels in a strip which go from sort of zero to seven. And they update every 500 milliseconds or half a second. So at start, we initialize it, the strip, um, and then we make sure everything's clear in the strip to clear it all. Um, the for next loop goes from zero to seven. And then what happens is, first of all, we light LED zero in the strip with a green color. And then we update the strip to light LED zero. Next of all, we go LED one, that lights green, and then so on every 500 milliseconds until the strip's full. And then we make it all clear again. Um, and this repeats. This is just a very simple test to explain the code and what you can do. So you can actually see um, once you've made all the changes you are updating it. So you can light multiple 
LEDs in the strip here. You can light them different colors, um, different brightnesses and so on before you update. As I just mentioned, with NeoPixels, you can have them cascaded, um, but you can also have them running from multiple pins, and this is what I'm doing here. What I'm actually doing is rather than displaying the LEDs sort of one at a time um, and using a four next loop, I'm still using a sort of semi loop, but it's all based off millis, um, which is the internal sort of timer of the Arduino. This means I'm not using delays and it's easier to run multiple strings of NeoPixels with different numbers of LEDs each. So you can see in the Arduino code and from the LEDs the large string or large wheel is going a lot quicker than the middle ring and also the smaller ring and the smaller ring is adding up the LEDs and lighting them one at a time. Um, there is a few bugs I need to do, like the smallest LED, it's not lighting the last one, um, and there is a small delay on the large ring which needs fixing. Now I'm going to talk about diffusion. Here is the same 7 LED NeoPixel ring as I've been using earlier. First of all, I'm going to use a piece of acrylic that I've sanded on one side and just hold it in front. And you can see as it dulls, you can actually see the individual LEDs through it. What I can do is add a piece of milk carton to diffuse the light. And you can see this really helps. You don't tend to see the individual LEDs as it fades out too much, not compared to the single layer of diffusion. One step up is actually using a piece of um, HDPE or polypropylene or something. This is sort of three millimeters thick and you can see it's very good at diffusing the light. I can get really close or touching it and I can only just see the individual LEDs if I move it further away you get you lose them and then you can actually mix them up so I can put a bit of milk carton directly on the LEDs he says and then the HDPE further away and it lights it up Another trick I can do is actually using 3D printed sort of clear PLA sections with patterns on. So here I have a sort of ring section. And the thicker bits do actually show yep, the light. Um, it's quite hard to see with a webcam. And then I can diffuse it with the HDPE as I did before. And then if I want to do custom patterns, I can do these as well. So here is a nice hexagon pattern which works. And if I just hold them apart a bit, you get a nice effect as it fades in and out. So moving on from that, I did a bit of a test for T3. So here is one of the side eyes. So it's it's hard to tell on webcam, um, but on the left side of the white PETG, I've actually painted silver inside. Um, on the right side, it's left just bare PETG. Um, this is good reason why you don't print uh, in light colours with LEDs behind them because it actually shines through. Um, for the final pro pro project um, I'm actually going to print in black PCG with silver paint inside to help reflect the light. Um, and you can see at the top here you've got the hexagon pattern with the um, HDPE diffusion layer. 
Earlier on I mentioned about angles of LEDs and this is where it starts to get important. Um, when I'm actually lighting something up I need to know so how bright it has to be and if I want a pattern on it. If it's going to be sort of very bright then you're looking at sort of one very bright LED or multiple LEDs sort of focused on that spot. So let's say for example I want to sort of light this up. Um, the actual circle itself is about 60 millimeters diameter um, so I need to hold it out say this far and it's sort of lighting it all up um, if I just want the sort of black circle in the middle it's up I'm almost sort of touching the LEDs themselves and this is again using the HDPE um, so again as I go further out it still lights it up and you get sort of more diffusion. From previous recordings you can see sort of where I was leading up to is ultimately these lights for T3. Um, so you've got the large eye, middle eye and sort of smaller eye. So and originally I was using sort of white PTG um, and through experimentation I worked out the distance between the LEDs and the actual sort of diffusing material for three millimeter P uh, what is it polypropylene um, and with the middle eye I worked out I need sort of 12 millimeters sort of away from the LED and here you can see the test with the silver paint so this is just sort of rotating lights as you can see um, uh, all different colors because I can um, although it will be different when I have a final droid. You can see them rotating here and here is the test of having the sort of shrouds on which ultimately will be black PETG when finished. Um, I've soldered them all as standard with a servo connector just off screen um, and that can be connected to the Arduino or microprocessor. Um, these two here I could run off a single Arduino, um, as soon as I plug this one in it basically tripped the Arduino and the power, it was just a little bit too much. Um, so I'm having to use a 5 volt UBEC connected to a 12 volt power supply and this just takes it down to 5 volts to supply the Arduino and the near pixel rings. Um, so you can see with the green one it is so nicely diffusing although it is being sort of washed out because of a webcam and then when I put the blue one on hopefully this you can see and it's just an interference fit hopefully that shows a bit better ultimately there will be some sort of like pulsing in pulsing out of the LEDs um, and some random LEDs that are off so it looks different and for the large eye this is a bit of over engineering yes. turns around and locates and you can see that's quite a big beefy eye so I think this is 120 about 114 millimeters diameter um, yeah and in t total you can see the diffusing material is important, the LEDs are important, the distance between the LEDs and diffusing material um, and the number of LEDs themselves which I did forget to mention which is an important fact. So if I go back to the large ring um, I could have put a lot more sort of rings in here although through the testing they're not needed um, with a single one, a single ring in the middle, and then two other rings, um, you don't need it anymore. The it lights the diffusing material enough; you don't need it. So if I go like this, that should have been easier. Um, you don't need any more rings. Any more rings just makes it a little bit brighter, but also adds a lot more current, which you don't want. You want to pull as much, little current as possible um, to light up the device you want to. If I sort of pull this out further, you can still see it's sort of lighting it up. But if I can get as close as possible, it means I can 
have your LEDs as close as possible, which is fine. Um, going back to the small ring I started with, it was just a single sort of straight through, and this was fine. However, there's no way for the heat to escape. With a big ring, you can see there's lots of holes in the center, and with a middle ring, you can see there's holes in the middle as well. With the smaller one, what I've done is you can just have to hold over here. Um, you can see I've put holes through to the front that go through the side there, um, and this just creates air vents so hot air can escape. What I don't want is the hot air to be building up in a closed area. Um, eventually, it's going to get hot and it won't get hot enough to melt stuff. However, um, it's never good to have a enclosed area with heat building up. Um, anyone that's done an event with R2, either in an area with stage lights or outside on a summer's day, um, after, a while, after a while, it gets really hot inside the dome. Um, and you can imagine all the lights are causing this as well. So you want to try and minimize sort of the power draw from the LEDs, um, creating areas for the light to escape, um, and so on. It's not necessary to have a like fan in there, unless something's getting like really hot. Um, but you can see this is a basic demonstration of how to design with the LEDs or near pixels, um, what to take into account, and other design considerations such as angle and power and current.